am kind of. Uh, okay, I'm ready whenever you are. I'm recording. Just tell me when to push play. Okay. Push, push play. Hi, I'm Carly Costanzo. I went to Cherry Creek High School and graduated in 2015. I was the first cohort of the medical professionals class with Mr. Stirrup. So I'm just gonna talk about where I'm at now and how so I got. I always knew I wanted to be in the medical career just throughout my life. It's looked different. Originally, I wanted to be a baby doctor. I didn't really know what that meant. Um, and then over the years, I was like, I wanna be a pediatrician in a hospital. And then I really found my love for emergency medicine. So I shadowed a couple doctors uh, in the emergency room and got to see all the different positions. And originally I thought that I wanted to go to med school and be a doctor. And then after talking to some of the providers that I shadowed, they said that possibly a nurse practitioner or physician assistant route might be more beneficial due to less schooling, less debt, et cetera, but you get to do the same scope of practice. So when looking for colleges, I really kind of dove into what I wanted to do. Um, and my idea was nurse practitioner or physician assistant. And the two of those run really neck and neck um, with your scope of practice. Basically everything that a nurse practitioner can do, a physician assistant can do, um, is basically just who is your director above you and looking after you. Um, so between those two, I decided to go the nurse practitioner route uh, because with that, I could major in nursing and then start working as a nurse and go to school online for a nurse practitioner. Whereas physician assistant, it would just be a kind of general biology degree um, and not necessarily a guaranteed job where I could start working and going to school. So to me, nursing just made sense. Um, I've always looked up to nurses from when I went to hospitals. Applying to colleges, I was looking at nursing schools all over Colorado because I knew I wanted to stay in Colorado. Um, and I toured UCCS, which I really enjoyed that campus. It's down in the Springs and um, just super, super pretty views from where you're at on that campus. And I ended up getting into that nursing school and that program. Um, I did the four-year program. You can do a four-year program or a five-year program. Um, I had to do the four-year program because of the scholarship that I had gotten. I had to finish within four years. Um, but I got into that program. But the summer going into nursing school, I was like, I need a job. So I was debating between EMT or CNA. Uh, I spoke to a mentor of mine and um, he was an EMT and worked at a volunteer fire department before going into nursing school and just raved about it. In my head, I thought that EMTs really didn't have that much of a scope of practice, that really only paramedics could do things uh, pre-hospital wise, but in Colorado, that is not the case. EMTs have a very large scope of practice. Um, so I got my EMT uh, summer going into nursing school, started nursing school in the fall of 2016. Um, and I got my IV certification because my goal with my EMT was actually to work in an emergency room um, as an EMT tech, which they have positions in every emergency room as, a, as an EMT. So I got my IV certification and my preceptor I was working with, we were talking about how to get my foot in the door. And he said that he needed an EMT on his Friday night shift at his volunteer fire department. Um, so he said, why don't you come do a ride along and see if you like it. And if you do, put in an application. So I did. I absolutely fell in love with it and I've been here ever since. So about 2017. I graduated in 2019 with my RN. I got my BSN, so Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. Um, and I work in Thornton at North Suburban Medical Center, which is a level two trauma center in the ER as a nurse. So I'm full-time nurse in Thornton and then part-time firefighter EMT here at Palmer Lake. And I will go ahead and talk about we did how a quick how-to list on how to become a firefighter. I will say before I begin this, uh, not all fire departments require you to have Fire One or your EMT prior to applying, such as South Metro, which is uh, the fire agency that is in our district uh, with Cherry Creek Schools. Um, however, for a lot of departments, they do require Fire One. So I would say the first step is obtaining Firefighter One and your hazmat ops and awareness. They typically come um, hand in hand if you do it through a department. I did mine through Larkspur Fire Department. Um, and you can also do it at any sort of community college like Red Rocks Community College, Arapahoe Community College, uh, Pikes Peak Community College down in the Springs. 
Um, and then obtain your EMT basic. Uh, I did mine through South Metro Fire, uh, but again, you can do that at any sort of community college or big hospital program, such as uh, Denver Health Center or Health, etc. Um, along with your EMT, it is helpful to get that EMT IV course because um, as an EMT, uh, you expand your scope of practice with just getting this IV course, which is a three-day uh, course, typically, depending on where you take it. So the next step is just to apply, apply, apply. Uh, National Testing Network is the website that lists all the applications uh, in the state and out of state. Um, most of them require a CPAT, which is a candidate physical agility test, which you can uh, YouTube and that has um, a very good walkthrough of what that entails. And then a fire team test, which is a standardized test that consists of a mechanical section, reading section, human relations section, and the math section. Uh, and based on your scores, um, it depends on where you rank with all the candidates on these bigger departments. Um, fourth. I wanted to add in never stop studying, even when you have a bajillion years on the job, never stop learning. It is an ever-changing um, environment and there's always stuff to be learned. Um, and then throughout your career, um, just continuing certs after Firefighter 1, there's Firefighter 2, um, there's DOU, DOP, DOA, so Driver Operator Utility, Driver Operator Pumper, Driver Operator Aerial, um, and then Fire Officer 1, Fire Officer 2, and um, you have all your Wild Lancers, S-130, S-190, the list just goes on and on. Um, um, and then I will touch base on um, if you do want to go to college and get some sort of either associates or bachelors, you can do that as well. Um, typically it's in associates or bachelors in fire science, but there are different like fire arson investigations uh, and stuff like that. Next we'll go over what a typical day looks like at day-to-day -to -day operations as a firefighter. Kind of depends on where I'm sitting in the truck. Today I am the driver engineer operator. Um, this is our engine. It's a type one. Um, we call our engine 2015. As the engineer, I'm responsible for getting us to the calls, um, positioning us on the calls, pumping the water if we have a fire um, through our hoses and everything. Um, so that's my responsibility for today. We typically start our days with truck checks. So we pull all of our apparatus out and we just check and make sure that we have everything on the truck that we would need to have uh, in case of an emergency. And it's just accountability to make sure that we didn't leave anything on a call previously. Um, so our compartments are numbered um, numerically, one through nine. Um, we'll just go over a couple of them. This is some of our nozzles, some of our adapters, reducers, uh, just typically appliances in this. Um, in this compartment. In this compartment too, it's, it's all of our hand tools. So you have your closet hook, your pig head axe, flat head axe, uh, your irons, which is a Halligan uh, flat head axe and a wedge. Um, and we have a whole bunch of different hand tools that we can use on different scenes. So I won't go through the rest of the truck, but you kind of get an idea of what we're looking for. For our medical supplies, we want to make sure that none of our medications are expired or any of our uh, bandages or anything like that are expired and that, again, they're all accounted for before we run. After truck checks, our days can vary. Uh, we typically do a lot of PR stuff within the community, especially with our elementary school up the street, uh, learning about firefighters, getting comfortable with firefighters in their gear because it can be scary, uh, how to stop, drop, and roll, things like that, etc. We also end up giving a lot of truck tours outside on the weekends because we have a lot of uh, citizens who walk past the fire station and the kids love it, looking at the fire truck. Uh, we also do training every day. Um, we do two hours of firefighter training and one hour of EMS training a day. We also clean our firehouse a lot to make sure that it is always presentable for any citizen that would like to use our restroom or just have a tour of our station, uh, etc. And of course we run calls throughout the day. In the fire service, the calls that you get are typically 80% medical calls, 20% miscellaneous. Within the medical calls, you can run on chest pain, shortness of breath, uh, abdominal pain, traumatic injuries, anything like that. Uh, the miscellaneous ones can include lift assists, uh, running on those fire pits on a fire ban. Uh, we typically also can run on 
animal. Now that we've covered how to become a firefighter and what your everyday looks like uh, as a firefighter, we're gonna touch on how to become a nurse and what your day looks like as a nurse. Uh, so there's lots of different angles that you can come at for becoming a nurse. Uh, I would say step one, apply to a college with a nursing program. This will really help you in the big scheme of things uh, to graduate earlier rather than later and make sure that you have all the prerequisites for that particular program. Uh, step two, think, start thinking about a specialty that you could potentially want to be in. Uh, it's okay if you have no idea what specialty you want to be in. Most of my friends had no idea what they wanted to do and just kind of figured it out over time. However, uh, knowing a specialty earlier rather than later and getting your foot in the door there just helps in the long run. Step three, uh, and this step can be anywhere in the process, but I suggest sooner rather than later, again, for the experience and for networking, getting your foot in the door, I would become a CNA or an EMT. CNA, if you are looking to be more on the floor, uh, so med surge, surgical trauma, anything like that, and EMT if you're interested in ICU or emergency medicine, more of your critical care uh, medicines. Uh, again, this is primarily for the experience. You really want that experience. Step four, apply to nursing schools. Uh, you can do this through a BSN program or an associates. Uh, either way, you're gonna end up with your RN. You can also get your LPN, but most places require your RN uh, to function as a registered nurse. Uh, five, network during clinicals throughout your nursing program and throughout work if you decide to work as a CNA or EMT, uh, cause that will give you letters of recommendation and really get your name out there uh, in the work field. Lastly, graduate and get a job as a nurse. There's lots, there's always a demand uh, for nurses, so work hard and get your name out there. <laughs> so the role of a nurse can look different depending on where you work. I'm just gonna cover what it looks like to be an emergency room nurse because that is where I'm most experienced in. Uh, but there are plenty of resources out there. Just ask anybody that you know that works in the nursing profession and I'm sure they'd be more than happy to share their experience with you. So in any uh, position as a nurse, but particularly in emergency nursing, you work based off of acuity. It's not first come first serve. You have to prioritize your patients and your to-do list um, while constantly reassessing everybody to make sure nobody's deteriorating. Within that, we deal with life-threatening and non-life-threatening uh, emergencies. And so we typically go off of, a, of an ESI, it's an emergency severity index, uh, just kind of telling everybody in the department how many resources this patient needs and how quickly they need them. Um, so we get, as a level two trauma center, we get lots of traumas from the highway. You can get inner city uh, related violence, such as gunshots, stab wounds, etc. So the day really just varies. Ultimately, there are just so many different options and directions that you can go in the medical profession, whether that be emergency, uh, critical care in general, hospital, uh, at home health care. There's just so much you can do with it. So I will attach my contact information. I'll attach my email for any questions because I'm sure there's plenty out there. So don't hesitate to give me a shout. I love talking uh, about this kind of stuff. So good luck to all you. Um, and congrats to the seniors graduating this year. Take care. Bye -bye. Okay. Are you still there? Yeah. So unshare. You can unshare your screen. And I'll come back on video too. I went. I took my video off, so I wasn't on your screen. Okay. So hey, so we're still recording. So I just wanted to say congratulations to you. Um, Thanks. Wow. Really, really great information and what a great presentation and you know firefighter and a and a nurse but i wow you, you just won the super bowl i mean that's really cool, really cool. <laughs> i do it all <laughs> hey so i have to ask you did this class inspire you to go into what you went into Absolutely. I think it definitely gave me uh, more of an insight. I didn't touch about flight nursing and excuse me, stuff like that. But I do remember specifically a flight crew came out during my course. Um, and that is ultimately, I think, where I want to go because I kind of get the best of both worlds. But absolutely, it was very informative. There's just so much, like I said, there's so much you can do in the medical uh, profession. And this class really just kind of helps you know how to get there and what options are out there. Because typically what we know about is what we see through Hollywood and there's just so much beyond that. So yeah, absolutely. 
Good for you. So if you need Teresa Zuber's information, I'm happy to send it to you. And um, I, so I don't know if you guys ever knew this, but she, she and I had arranged, they were going to have uh, the green helicopter land on our baseball field. So I, I figured the day before I should probably let the administration know this is what I have planned. <laughs> and they thought it was the greatest idea and they ran it through risk management and risk management at the district was like, no, we don't land helicopters. And really? Yeah. It, huh. granted, they would in an emergency situation, but not for demonstration. And it was funny because I, it was one of those where I was like, I kept thinking to myself, maybe I should ask for forgiveness versus permission. Right. <laughs> But I was kind of like, that's so oh. interesting. I wonder which part of it they wouldn't. I, yeah, it's like the, the, these people flying these helicopters, they're not amateurs. They're, you know, no, and they love doing it. They love coming out for oh, yeah. training presentations and stuff like that. So it gives them something to do. Absolutely. And I just, I was like, oh, come on, the, the kids are going to be fine. But um, yeah, you know, but who knows? But I'm going to stop recording and, uh, and if you if you would wanted the kids to email you, just text me your email information, and I'll let okay you along with the uh, the video. You know, and the unfortunate thing is we're not in the classroom, right? Um, but the class is growing like crazy. Like the kids are really liking these videos. I had six more kids add the class today. That's awesome. That's we're awesome. At, we're at the hundred hundred mark right now, and I'm like, this is so wow. Cool. That's a lot. I know a lot more than I feel like we had originally. Yeah, I think the biggest class I ever had was I think we had 104 the very first year, and then we dropped down in like into the high 70s, and then it's been climbing back up. So, you know, all kinds of cool, cool things. Oh, I'm gonna stand up. <laughs> Dang, that's crazy. That's super exciting, though. I mean, seriously, there's so much, so much to do, and that's my. My problem is I want to do all of it. <laughs> so that's why I work as a nurse and, and a firefighter. So I'm just kind of navigating where I want to go next. I think I'm going to get, uh, Creighton has a two week nursing to paramedic program. If you have a good standing EMT license and you have two years experience in critical care as an RN uh -huh. um, or PA doctor, anything above an RN. Um, so then I can essentially just challenge the paramedic program and gain that scope um, pre-hospital because now I can only function as a as an EMT, so basic life support. Right. Um, even though I have my ACLS and PALS to work as a as an advanced care life support provider, so. Um, but yeah, it's super fun. I love it all. <laughs> Well, I, I tell you, I, I'm excited for, you know, when next year, when all of this uh, COVID stuff goes away and uh, I actually have you come out and do your presentation live in front of kids. And uh, Yeah, that would be, that would be awesome. Who knows, maybe we can convince the guys from Palmer Lake to all drive down. I'll, I'll get you guys all breakfast. And uh... <laughs> Well, most of us live down in that area, actually. My chief lives in Castle Rock. Um, my captain lives in Castle Rock. Uh one of my closest buddy lives in Parker. I live in Denver. So most of us kind of live in that direction anyway. So I'm sure we commission. could swing a couple of them. You just have to swipe the rigs from the station. See if that'll yeah. work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll definitely see what, what we can do when it comes to that time. Well, you're awesome. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording, but that doesn't stop our Zoom call, okay? Okay. Sounds good. Thank you again.